this will answer a lot of your questions. You ever had somebody say, well, why does God allow this? Why did God let that happen? Okay, now you have to remember that there are only two races on this earth. The children of God and the children of the devil. That's it, right? Has nothing to do with skin. Has to do with heart. Has to do with nature. Has to do with character. That's what it is. And there's only two. That's it. Everything else is a mere adaptation of some sort of that, if you want to use that term. And so we have man, and we know that Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, from before the foundation of the world. Is that right? So that was, so you see God has this plan. He knew how it was going to go. He knew the lamb would have to be slain, right? So he knew there was going to be a problem. And he fixed the problem before it was a problem. Now, what's that called? Wisdom. See, when you, wisdom is being able to see the problem before it happens and fix it, right? And so he fixed it even before the problem arose. And so then the rest of the time with man, God was trying to get the lamb that was slain back into the world so that he could create another race because there was only one race at that time after the fall of man, and that was children of the devil. Because whoever you bow the knee to and serve, that's whose servant you are. And so when Adam and Eve bowed the knee to Satan, then that's who they served. And then at that point, they died. Now, notice they still lived physically, but their spirit became dead, meaning separation from God. It doesn't mean to cease to exist. It means separated from God. So man was separated from God, and now God is doing everything he can to work through man. And so he had to go find a man that would agree with him and work with him, right? Because God, now listen to this, God <clears throat> told man, have dominion. Now, most people say, well, why didn't God just come in and wipe it all out and start over? Or why didn't he stop Satan at the beginning? Well, okay, you have to remember, God told man, you have dominion over everything over the earth and over the, everything on the earth and everything even that, you know, crawls, flies, swims, all that stuff. So man had dominion. He should have said to the serpent in the garden, get out of here. He said, uh, God told him to subdue the earth. And so he should have said, uh, no, stand back, Eve, let me handle this. And should have just cast that thing right on out. But it, he didn't. So man fell. God knew he wasn't going to do it. So he made provision beforehand. So then man falls. When he falls, he dies in his spirit. So now God, now, now get this. I'll go ahead and go to Psalm 115. And in verse 13, it says, He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. You are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. But now look at verse 16. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. The heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. Now, see, this answers the question of why God doesn't just come in on the scene and just do whatever, you know, should be done. Why? Because the earth he gave to man. And see, we may take that a light thing, but when God says something, he can't alter the thing that came out of his mouth. So now he made the heavens, the earth, he made the earth, but then he gave the earth to Adam, to man. Then, now notice, <clears throat> Satan comes into the garden, the serpent, and he convinces man to bow his knee to him. And at that point, now why, why would he want that? Because at that point, see, if you get the head, then everything the head's over, you get too. So if Satan could convince Adam and Eve to bow their knee to him, then automatically everything they had oversight of would be under his control. So he went straight for the head, got the head to bow the knee to him. And so the earth God had given to man. So whenever Satan got man to bow his knee to him, now the earth became Satan's. Now it was still man's. But now man's nature and character had changed to be like that of his new God, which was Satan. And so now the earth, 
now Satan had a lot of control over the earth because man had control and God now is on the outside. Whereas man was supposed to be working with God and executing God's will on the earth, now man, because of a different nature and because he switched lords, you would say, now he has to, he, he literally rules the earth and Satan can rule the earth through man, right? That's why you'll see sometimes different wording. You'll see the earth and then you'll see the world. The earth always refers to the, 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 the dirt, the mountains, the streams, all that kind of stuff. But when it says the world, you have to look up the word because the word usually means the system of how the world runs, which is what? Satanic. And so now Adam has bowed the knee to Satan. Satan is now giving commands and he doesn't really have to command Adam to do much because now Adam's nature is different and he does the nature of his father, which is Satan. And so man starts a quick descent. Now, but notice he said, now, did, now do you believe these scriptures? Yes. That God gave, that God, the heavens are his, but the earth he gave to man. Is that right? Yes. All right. Now, and we know, okay, uh, that as I just said, that Adam bowed the knee. So now the earth technically belongs to Satan by way of Adam. Can, can we agree with that? Right? Now watch. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting in verse 3. Paul says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now notice, in verse 4, in whom the God of this world. Now that's obviously not our heavenly father. Why? Because he's not blinding anybody's eyes to the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. So obviously here we are talking about Satan, which the Bible calls the God of this world. Now, now think about that. So Satan was trying to supplant God in heaven. It didn't work. So now he comes to earth and tries to supplant God's rule over the earth by going through man, and it worked for him in that, in that sense. But now watch. Go with me to Luke chapter 4. Notice it just said, uh, in whom the God of this world. Well, when did Satan become the God of this world? So we're just going to look at this. It says in verse 1, Luke verse 1, and Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If you be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Notice the devil always attacks when you're at your weakest, and he tries to bring the thing that you think might alleviate your weakness. But notice also what he attacked with. If you're the son of God, notice the devil's first, and you'll see this always, the devil always tries to attack you in the area of identity. He will always try, if you're the son of God. I mean, how many times, don't raise your hand, but how many times if somebody said, I thought you were a Christian. I can't believe you did something like that. I can't, see, what is that? That's the devil testing you to see if you know who you are. Right? Oh, I, I can't believe you did that. I just, I thought you were a Christian. What is he doing? He is attacking your identity. And he wants to get you to see yourself differently than God sees you. And he'll try to get you to back down. But now notice, it says, If you be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written. That's how you win against the devil every time. That's what Jesus used every time. That's what you're going to have to use every time. All you have to do is, before you can say it is written, uh, you've got to know it's written, which means you've got to spend some time in the Word. Amen? But whenever the devil comes around, just get it ready, right? Just have it ready. It is written. And know where it's written, okay? <clears throat> and he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, now watch, the devil switches tactics, and the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. All the kingdoms of the world. Okay? And the devil said unto him, 
All this power, all of the authority over these things that you see, all these kingdoms, all the authority over these kingdoms, will I give you. And watch this. And the glory of them. So what's he hitting on? Ego. Right? I'll give you all this power. I'll give you the authority over these things. And all the glory of them will be yours. But now watch what he says. For that, this, what, what you're looking at, the, all these kingdoms of the world, watch, that is delivered unto me. So Satan is telling him, all of these things, all these kingdoms were delivered to me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. Now notice that. What's he saying? He said, all of this is mine. Why? And he said, I can give it to whoever I want to. It was given to me, and I can give it to you. And so when he said, people say, well, no, that's not true. See, the devil was lying. I didn't, no, if he wasn't lying. Now listen, if the devil was lying, then that wasn't a true temptation. But it says that Jesus was being tempted by the devil on all these things and that he was tempted in every area just like us. And so here he is uh, having to defeat the temptation against his ego, right? And so we know it's true that the, the, the world was delivered to Satan. When was it delivered? When did he become the God of this world? In the garden. At that point, he was seen as the God of this world. Now, there were other demons and spirits and things like that that were involved in the fall of Satan and that are his underlings, you might say. And the thing is, these are the gods, these, are these demons, these fallen angels and these demons, if, as we would call them, are the gods of the Amorites, the god of the Canaanites. They were the gods that the children of Israel were always fighting against. I'll tell you this, they're also the gods of Greek mythology. Zeus and Jupiter and all these different ones. And so they, these gods that they had, that's, now you have to realize because God said, you shall have no other gods before me. So if there were no other gods, you couldn't have another god. That makes sense? But we know that these, and Paul said, we know that these gods were not gods. Why? Because they were actually demons. Paul says that. And so they weren't gods, but you can make anything a god if you serve it. Whatever you serve, that becomes your god. And it doesn't have to be a spirit being. It could be a boat. It could be a piece of leather shaped in a strange way. You can make anything a god. Isn't that right? Yes. You're awful quiet. <laughs> So now, but he said, have no other gods before him. So now notice, let's keep going. And he says, this is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Thou therefore will worship me. If you will worship me, then all will be yours. And of course, Jesus said, it is written. You're not going to worship anything but God. Isn't that right? So every time Jesus was tempted, he answered, it is written. Now, so, so far we've got Adam being put over this world. Now look, just bear with me for a minute. If Satan became the God of this world, whenever Adam handed the world over to him, who was the God of this world before it was handed to Satan? Adam. Exactly. Why? Now, see, in this terminology, God doesn't mean a supreme being co or, or self-existent. It doesn't mean that. It means the highest authority at the time. Right? So, in that sense... Adam was God of this world. Why? He had been given authority. And as a matter of fact, uh, God even told Moses, the people are going to look at you and you will be as God unto them. He didn't say you're going to be God. He said they're going to look at you like God because they don't know me. So when they need help, they're going to come to you and you're going to have to come to me. But because I help them when you come to me, they're going to think they're going to look at you like God and think you can answer all their problems. And so we have to look at what it means to have this term of God, Right? Because there is one God and there's none like him. Amen? He is self-existent. He doesn't, now listen, he doesn't need us to exist. We need him. Amen? And so that's the only God in, in that sense of being truly God.